Hello everyone, it's Open House. <clears throat> <clears throat> Hello everyone, it's Tuesday. Welcome to Your View. I am Mariah Afolabi Brand. As always, I have the ladies with me. Hi, I have a bit of the Nicole. congestion there. <laughs> How are you doing, Mariah? I'm fine, thank you. I mean, mm. yesterday was a, mm. a weird day, right? Um, everyone is out and still protesting. Uh, I was caught up in the um, protest on my way from work yesterday, you know. Um, thankful at the time that I was out, it was still very much peaceful. Mm. There, were, there was no violence. Um, we we're trying to pass through the protesters. They ensured that you know traffic was able to flow, although we were stuck in traffic for quite a bit of time before we got home. Mm. And then eventually, uh, later in the day, you know, we started hearing all sorts of stories. stories. I was so worried, trying to make sure everybody got home safe. Mm. You know, it yeah. was crazy for me too because mm. I I was in Yaba. So usually I come to Third Milan Beach, but I don't know where my driver got the advice that we should pass the Kurudu Road. So I tried to go and help a Macaulay, bust out into Kurudu Road, and I saw people marching. I saw young men. You know, you could see the anger in their eyes, and I'm thinking, oh my goodness, <laughs> I cannot. I said, bros, yeah, 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 can't wait to you turn quickly mm -hmm. to take Third Milan Bridge. Unfortunately, it was free good, but when we got to Oshaki, it got really, really tight. Mm -hmm. And till I got home, it took me over four hours, approximately four hours to get to the house. And we don't stand still. We didn't move yeah. at all. So, I mean, it was a really, really um, terrible experience yesterday. Nima, how was your experience going getting home? Free. Oh, it was yeah, free. Oh, yeah, good. Plus. Because BC, it took about <laughs> like five hours. I must say I thank so. you to Mary Alimi. So, Mary wanted me and had to go somewhere in Ikeja, and I didn't want to go. But that sort of got me out of all the other routes I had for right. traffic. So mm -hmm. thank you to me. You want to go that place again today? Mm -hmm. But <laughs> so BC got there. home pretty late. Yeah. She left Very here late. like almost about before 11. Mm. And she got, I think, like three or so. Mm -hmm. She got like six hours. She's on the island. And yeah. it took so her So she forever. must have met the Ojo Legba one as well as the Lekki Toll Gate one oh, as well. Goodness. So mm -hmm. the gridlock was terrible yesterday. Was uh, we'd like to open our phone line at some point so that people can call in to share their stories. Uh, on today. Mm. But how are you doing, Mariam? Aside from the traffic story, anything interesting happening? No, um, nothing are you, happening. Are you, are you, are you <laughs> on the hashtag end police brutality? Oh, yes. yes. Oh, yes. Mm. Oh, definitely. Mm. Definitely. Mm. This is very, imp it's a very important message. It is also very commendable that the youth have risen up to their responsibility well, and they understand that they are right, you know. Mm. Their voice is their power and they are asking only for well, things you know to what be I, done you know right. What I, you know what my worry is? I think Nigerian leaders do not understand the importance of posture, the importance of the things you're not saying that we're saying. Mm. Because when our president spoke, you, you, he, will, in his own mind, I was addressing the hashtag answers. But you see, sometimes about your demonstration, what we are seeing, the fact that X Y Z was fired, the, the fact that you have the police chiefs with you, they are speaking with you, everybody's in solidarity. There's like press briefing where everybody takes a turn to say a few things. Mm -hmm. We see that, or we see the police say, you know what, we're, we're dropping our arms. You know how when they did the hashtag um, Black Lives Matter, yes. where policemen came and knelt down before the protest, mm -hmm. they were sorry. Mm -hmm. As that's, we're not asking you to do that in Nigeria. We're saying that, demonstrate to us that you've heard us, mm -hmm. that you feel the pain, yeah. and that you are on our side. That posture sends a long message mm -hmm. than your rhetoric of, Yes, we've dissolved SARS and all. So I think we, our leaders are missing that unique opportunity yes. to engage by action, not by your words. Mm. We need to see something done. Demonstrate to us that. And so, because when, when the conversation we had yesterday with our guest, and I was saying that what these guys need is that they need, they, they're tired of the rhetoric. They want something more concrete. Yes, yes, yes. And that's really the missing link. And yes. I think I think I'm because need yes, to the conversation is we have people saying, okay, we already read to you over the papers, or over the news that this has um, SARS has been um, dissolved. So why are you on the streets? Right. So that is what the extra thing that you're talking yeah. about. Yes. If you had said this is what we have dissolved it, and these and this and these persons right. have right. been called to right. face a particular right. panel, and then these people have been asked to leave. That is what you know. People are expecting to hear well, from. Well, it's our focus now. today because hey, that's what Nigeria is talking about, and we're going to be opening our phone lines to our viewers, and we'll be speaking with quite a number of people who are on the streets today to hear their views and why they're still on the street. But first, we go through the front pages of the papers. Stay with us. We'll be right back. All right, so we have a shout out. No, no, no. 
Please go ahead. Mm -hmm. Who's mm -hmm. your mm -hmm. later? Shout okay. okay, I didn't know you had a shout out. Okay, let's start <laughs> with um, the nation this morning. And SARS protesters, Grand Lagos, Abuja, other cities. We see our action governor right there, yeah. Governor Sangwolu. Um, amongst the protesters, uh, trying to calm them down at the toll in Lekki. 774,000 public works jobs set for takeoff. Okonjawela, six final push for WTO DG job. Akira Dolu losing a career, a shock. <laughs> Second wave of COVID 19 likely. Uh, and PTF ones, and uh, finally, Nigeria signs air pact with US, Morocco, others. Okay. Yeah, so I took the Conja Wella story. Okay, and this is just, um, you know, she had a meeting with our president, and he's just, <clears throat> and he's telling us that he's giving her his support, whatever calls that need to be made, whatever letters that need to be pushed, whatever he needs to do in order to make sure that she clinches this position he's going to do. And she's very grateful for the support she's getting so far from our president and from um, the minister for finance, the former minister, sorry, the... Um, Ministers of Foreign Affairs and Ministry of Industry. She's also giving a, she's thanking the, and appreciating ECOWAS leaders also for endorsing her. Just so many yeah. people, um, presidents of other African countries do yeah. have endorsed yeah. her. And we just hope that, you know. So she has she requested that our president do everything he can, just like you said, mm -hmm. to ensure that that final push she needs to become, to get that job, yeah. um, is done for her. I wanted to take the Governor Wiki's story, so... Um, oh, did I miss that? Yes, yes go ahead. The governor, you teachers wage a burden, says Wiki. Yes, yeah, go the ahead. Governor Wiki believes that it's a burden on the <coughs> states, that the states were not carried along in arriving at it, even though he thinks that the teachers were overdue for a review. Mm. He, th he, th he thinks the president, you know, you know, didn't do it the right way and has burdened the state and, you know, um, criticized it based on that. But I remember clearly that he was former commissioner for education, for, for state for education. And during his time, also had one of the longest strikes. Mm. And if, you know, these issues that were, you know, as old as his time were not reviewed at that time, I think what they should be thinking about is how permanent and, you know, how possible, how quick mm. they'll make this work yeah. for those teachers who have waited since when he was minister for state and two times. Do you know what the president promised? 307,000. Like they can't afford it. No. You, if if you agree that it is overdue, yes. what you should what be thinking is how to generate that money. Because he would, you would, he would he generate it, it for House of Assembly members now. Brand new oh, cars no. for them. They review cars for sitting uh, I would, uh, House of yeah. uh, Assembly members every time. Okay, me, I would love now. for them to pay them 500,000. But uh, uh, we all agree that how can you go for minimum with 30,000 now and then the president jumps to 300,000? Well, like, so how dignity did you go about that? Being a politician in this country that yeah. everybody wants to be. Okay. Let there be dignity in other professions, you right. know, as old as I agree with you, absolutely. Yeah, we're on the same page tonight. Okay, let's move on to Vanguard. More hashtag NSAS protests work Lagos, Oshogbo, Ilori, and Abuja. Government released four JSS three students, teachers six weeks after. Wow, I didn't see that. Um, COVID-19, Nigeria may record 100 new imported cases daily, says PTF. Restructuring northern leaders, routes for 12-state structure, 100% resource control. Um, electricity, electricity tariff. FG agrees to provide relief for 10 Naira, 20 Kobo kilowatts for three months. Bandits kill 14 persons, travelers in Niger, Castina State. Okay, which are we taking the Vanguard? Mm -hmm. I have the restructuring story. Let me take that very quickly. Okay. Because it's interesting for the Southerners who have been clamoring for restructuring. So we're from the papers today, the Northern leaders have somewhat come to an agreement that they should return to the 12th state federal structure of 1967. Um, and uh, they will all have, feder they'll all be federating units and they'll have control of their resources. Hmm. And they'll have power to, con to create and maintain local government as they desire. Hmm. They'll overhaul the legislative list and all. I mean, it's a whole wish list here. But mm -hmm. it's, it's interesting to know that at least there's almost seemingly a northern consensus for that 12 state um, um, restructure. You know, the southern mm -hmm. states have always been saying for the past few years that, listen, we need restructuring. But northern didn't really come together. What but from this for me is that the resource control that yeah. they, they're pushing for. Because yeah. at the time when the other states, Charlie and Niger Delta states, were pushing for resource control, northern states were against it. So now that they're seeing so it, some yeah, leaders, but I hope it's all the leaders. Get into a meeting just point. is some leaders. So we'll see yeah. how that goes. Also, I think the north is, is now very much aware of the potential that it has to also oh, yeah. create. Absolutely. At the time, they had the fear, yes, so they didn't support so. it. You know, interesting. What's that? They speaks.
Everybody aligned. Oh, Do you see that? Did you yeah, see I've made that it the about her deal. Said it, and now so that only the Holy Spirit just made the northern. I'm just saying. Know, I'm Bank sorry. has the marginalization. Okay, of, go ahead. Go yeah. Ahead. So the um, the executive chairman <laughs> of the Federal Character Commission met with um, the national um, the Senate President um, Lawan, and he charged them really to ensure that there's no lopsidedness in um, the opportunities. Mm. As, um, when it comes to government appointments and employment, and he says that that is what their ministry is supposed to ensure, you know, right. that there is equitable distribution of the appointment and the employment across board. And that's it. Okay. <laughs> Moving on to Daily Trust. Despite SARS ban, protest continues. Um, refugee commission to train and support 350,000 Borno IDPs. Why Edo Assembly Speaker was impeached? Buhari Oshimbaju to spend 167 million on food and refreshment. Zazal Prince heads to court, six removal of Emir Bamali. Okay, so let's talk about the protest for a moment yesterday. Mm. Um, we talked about it, more. we're going to focus on it most of the show today. Mm. But um, I you had the. Yeah, she's. The okay, are you right? We have um, a human interest, bandits. Once okay. again, another sad story of okay, bandits in Kasena. In Kasena. And so. Um, on Sunday, they stormed three villages. Four people were killed. Amongst them were an imam, an imam and his deputy. The eyewitnesses say that they came in with weapons that they, their eyes have never seen before and that this has almost become <coughs> a daily occurrence mm. in their communities. I mean, every day, just change, you know, just clean the dates, put a new date. It's right. the same story right. in the different communities. <coughs> And it's just begging, they're asking us to pray as well as asking the government to please come to their right. rescue. Let's take the punch. Cop driver killed as protests spread across Lagos and others. Uh, dismissed cop steals job applicant um, phone and cash. I'm shocked I lost in Akure. And that's Governor Akure Dolu. Cora Young Flower Miller commits suicide over alleged debt. Uh, I'll reclaim my stolen mandate in 2022, says Fayoshi's ex deputy. Lawan faults federal government as Senate tackles government and ASU. Log jam. APC group tackles Bonis committee alleges elongation plot. Okay, and 17 killed in Oshun tanker fire Lagos about the expressway I Delta really crashes. I wanted to take that um, <coughs> tanker um, clash in an um, accident in Elisha, Elisha. Road, yes, in Oshun, highway in Oshun State. So about nine persons confirmed dead by the head of the fire service in Oshun State. You know, were involved in this diesel tanker explosion that happened along that highway. And um, several people were injured. Cars along, around the car that were that you know, received some splash of the diesel at the time of the explosion, were also destroyed. We continue to you know beg that you know, we find a safer means mm -hmm. of transporting this inflammable. Okay. Any other story in point? Yes, for there's you? another human interest story. So this um, middle-aged man was found to have he was found hanging in his shop in Quara State. Um, his co-trader <coughs> in the market said he had been com talking to his friends about having, uh, oh, he had like so much debt and he was, uh, he didn't know how he was going to pay back. And for them to just come to um, the market on Monday and found him hanging in his shop from the ceiling. You know, they're saying it's a suicide, but also I think we should make sure that we investigate this, you know, seriously because it may also be, God forbid, I hope it's not, you know, when someone owes somebody and is unable to pay it, you just hope that there's no foul play involved, you know, in an incident like this. Okay, there was a story that I missed, uh, 774,000 jobs, Buhari launches presidential empowerment scheme. That's the PS mm -hmm. scheme. Mm -hmm. And if you go to, what paper is this? I think it's Daily Trust where they were showing pictures of machines, mm -hmm. part of what's being distributed to help elevate youth out of poverty. I don't know. Okay. I don't want to be judgmental, but I think we've gone past um, this, but I, I'm sure it's probably more is beyond giving out these the machines. Motorbike. No, the motorbikes. The, the, the motorbikes. Motorbike 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 yeah. yeah, the motorbikes. Okay. Yeah, but... Um, but I'm happy that they've launched the scheme. You said machines, like in the north. Machines. Machine. Machine. Uh, okay, they are, they are the motorbikes. Okay, yeah. the motorbikes. Thanks for correcting that. Okay, that's all we can take on front page review. As we said earlier, we continue our conversation on the hashtag NSARS, hashtag end police brutality, going on across a number of states in Nigeria. When we come back, we're going to open our phone lines to our viewers to let us know what the experience was like. And we'll speak to a few 
um, leaders of this protest to see what exactly are their demands. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back to Your View. <clears throat> Thanks for staying with us. So before we move ahead, Tokwe, welcome to the show. How are you? How was uh, traffic? Traffic Where was... Where are you coming from? I'm coming from Ibado. So yesterday, I, I, um, I was in Ogbomo show yesterday, and I couldn't come in from Ogbomo show because the said protesters had caused heavy traffic in Lagos. So I waited that this morning by 4 a.m. would head out. But alas, we spent four and a half hours trying to get into Lagos. Mm. Really? Life happens. All right, we, there's so much going on out there, but let's mm. continue on this issue of the nationwide protest. On hashtag NSARS, the president has spoken, but the protest has grown tremendously, mm. causing apprehension due to some pockets of violence, alleged brutality by the police, arrest, watertight traffic across major routes, also reported killing around Surulere area of Lagos State. The question therefore is, despite the pronouncements from the IGP, and the president, why is the protest still ongoing? Well, join us on the show is Yemi Adamalekun, who is amongst those putting together uh, additional protests, I think, in Alausa. Good morning, Yemi. Are you there? Good morning. Now I can hear you. Yes, yes. Good to have you on the show. Yemi, I said in my opening statement that the, we've heard from the president. We've heard from the IGP. They've dissolved SARS. Why are you still on the streets? Well, very simply. The morning that they dissolved SARS, pretty much about an hour after the police in Abuja were water bombing, shooting life bullets and tear gassing protesters in Abuja. Mm -hmm. So simply that their, act, their words and their actions don't align. Mm -hmm. So we need to see a clear proof of intent that is not just an audio uh, cancellation as they've done almost every year in the last five years. Mm. What will show to you, Yemi, that the government is serious? What would you like to see or hear from the government to indeed show that they are serious of what they've said? All right, number one, what we're saying is that all protesters across the country need to be released. Ogun and Lagos have shown an example yesterday by releasing everybody in their custody, at least that we're aware of, okay. but that that should be the case in all states across the country. Number two, that they should set up a panel, immediately a judiciary panel, of in a public panel of inquiry for people to present their grievances against police brutality. So not just that, but against police brutality and give a timeline. So we set up the panel and we have within six months, we're going to have a report and this is what we're going to do with it. Right. And then also for the GMO, for example, who was killed, everybody who's been killed in the course of the protest, that justice is swift for them. Compensation for families, right. that starts as brutalized. And the police generally really has brutalized. Right. That before they redeploy anybody in fact, that they must undergo psychological evaluation right. and retraining, as with all police staff as well, just so that they understand that we're not in a military state. This is a democracy. Right. You engage. Our police officers don't, are not trained to de-escalate. They're trained to use violence. And as someone was saying um, recently, that it's in their MO that they're allowed to use violence. Mm. And that cannot be the case okay. in a democracy. Okay. So, and then uh, lastly... Um, that the welfare of police officers are also improved. Yeah. That we're very clear that they are not paid commensurate to the work and the yeah. circumstances out in the sun that they have to work, that that needs to be reduced. We understand the country is going through a financial crisis, right. but the intent needs to be there and a plan right. to improve, exactly. improve their welfare. Okay. Oh, last one. Police Act that was just signed. There are no operating guidelines to mm. basically put it in effect. So mm. a timeline for when that will be in effect as well. Okay. So really just timelines and specifics, not yeah. just we are going to do football. Because gotcha. there's a lot of distrust that governments have said this over and over again and right. nothing has happened. Gotcha. Right. All right. Um, Yemi, I agree with you on everything you've said. Every Nigerian understands this because we could be the next person tomorrow. However, we've seen that there the, um, the are pockets of violence. You're one of those that are demonstrating. You're one of those that are canvassing. People step out. How do you control it from deteriorating? Yesterday, I was at, I was in a boomer show at the Shaw's place. Mm -hmm in Ogbomosha, the upper of Ogbomosha's place, and 
as a reprisal attack, young people went to their Oba's palace mm -hmm. and they threw in stones. They destroyed the man's palace to a large extent and could have cost lives in the process to a, a man that has been their um, Oba for years, a 94-year-old man. Right. So I don't understand how the protest mm -hmm. could get to that level. And I want, what, what would you say is being done by organizers, those providing food and, sh and water for them to ensure that it doesn't get hijacked and doesn't deteriorate into violence? Number one, we're not security, and let's be clear about that. So it's not our job to guarantee anything. It's not our job to maintain the peace. That's the job of the police, and that's what we're saying that they must focus on doing rather than attacking citizens. As with every society, there will be bad elements, and that's where the, the, the role of intelligence. Again, that's a security agency function. That's not a citizen function, even though, yes, people are on the lookout. I, I, we have um, different processes and clusters. We have people whose job it is to look out for people who might want to cause trouble and then escalate it early before they do. The show of Obu Hosha's palace, very unfortunate incident, but the stories are also conflicting. One story that we've heard is that the young people were taking a dead body there to show that this person died and the show hasn't said anything. Yes, the man is old, and maybe that's why they thought that the gravity of his voice would carry weight, and things right. went awry. It's okay. similar to what happened in Lagos yesterday. The CP of Lagos said no, nobody was shot. Um, that it was a police officer that protested shot the police officer. But there's video footage that clearly shows that it was a misfire from one of their colleagues that, that killed him. But the narrative had already gone out that, oh, no, 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 that it was protesters that killed. So we also need to be very mindful of also how news comes out painting protesters in a bad manner. It's a mm. standard thing. There's a protest. People are, are said to have hijacked, right. there's violence, and you shut it down and shut down voices. But we have been peaceful. Abuja is my MO, anybody who wants to look. Water bombs, gunshots, yeah. uh, tear gas. But mm -hmm. not one, nobody has accused anybody in Abuja of violence. But all those things were done to them. Mm -hmm. So that's the reference right. point. So, Yemi, um, you know, this reforms that we're asking of for, from the police is not going to happen overnight. In fact, it's systemic. Please, because, so it, I can't really hear you. Okay. The reforms we are asking of government now, of the police, is not going to over, happen over, overnight. We, it's going to Definitely take a while not. to happen. How long are we willing, and how much are we willing to stake to get those reforms? Me and you know, it's beyond the police brutality. It's, yes. the, it's the systemic rot within the police. Yes. As lawyers, we can't even practice our profession when we get to a police station. We, have, we get a different law book from you know, what, we get, what we study when we get to the police station. So how long are we willing to stake to get these reforms done and done properly? I think what we're asking for now is even just intent. Just as you said, mm -hmm. I'm, I, I'm not a, I'm not, I don't position or posture to be a security expert. But if you tell me that to, for example, do the regulations for the police act, for those who are in the space, they said within a month that can be done. So for those who know what is required, if you tell me it's going to take one year, for what we know will take one month, I expect to be an outcry. They're like, no, 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 that's not it. Hmm. Um, a ju judicial inquiry, I would say easily could take up to six months. But it's to say that we set up the panel, we're going to within six months do this thing, and this is the procedure to do it. There will be uh, panels, there will be public hearings in maybe every state or every geopolitical zone. This is going to be the modality. People can send videos, people can send letters. So let there be a plan. And it's very instructive that for as long as we've been talking about reforming staff, that even now that they seem to want to be serious, they can't just automatically roll out the plan. It means that they never developed one. There's, mm -hmm. there's not one that we can put on the table and say, uh -uh. you know what, we've been wanting to do this, we just, whatever, whatever happened, but here we go, let's walk and roll. It's just now that we are now mm -hmm. running up and down trying to figure out, okay, uh, police report, mm -hmm. what do we do? There was a CSO uh, report in 2012. IO basically said about it yesterday that it was presented to the Deputy Senate President at the time, and in the transition government of the APC was presented to them in 2015. So if we're serious about this thing, there's enough work that's been done. All right. Okay. Yes. Right. You know, a lot of people have come with different sides to this story, the, um, to uh, the protest that's going on right now. Some people are saying, you know what, you're backing up the wrong tree. These people cannot do so much. What you're asking cannot be gotten from this protest. Yes, the answers will put, it's like putting a foot in the door, but really it won't get you anywhere. Do you agree? And what would be the right tree to back up? Sorry, I missed that. They said we're backing up the wrong tree. Yes. Yes, yeah, like, so I don't know. Yes, yeah, so there are you know different opinions out there. 
Some people are saying the NSAS protest is really not enough. It's not the um, it's not the way to go. If what we're expect what we're asking for what we're asking for. So, okay. do well, you agree? What What are they? Sorry, do you want have any idea what they're saying is where we should be going? Yeah, okay. So the idea, okay, so let me refer to this particular video that was making the rounds in, the, in social media. The deputy governor was heard to have said, you're, you're chasing a um, ringworm instead of leprosy. Oh, right. Yes. Okay. So right. the so, thing is, so we're asking, so Nigerians are saying, could this answer just really be how, what, the way to go to achieve what we want? Or there's really a bigger fish to catch, and that is what we should be focusing on. So the bigger fish to catch is poor governance structure that we have. The police are a reflection of society. So you, it's not that they are a, a, an island. There's, there's just madness in all sectors, really. But to get to that point, you, the, rest, the way corruption or politicians are being paid too much or this or that is happening, it resonates differently from the emotional connection of someone who has faced the barrel of a gun, someone who has been beaten, someone who has been marched to an ATM and money withdrawn, mm -hmm. someone whose phone has been taken. So because of that emotional connection to the activities and the brutality of our police force, it has taken on a life of its own. And that's why it's a very different type of process as well, because there's no command structure. From Mekwe to Badagri to Abba to Ibadan, people are organically organizing based on their lived experiences. And you can't right. take that away. Right. So it's very disingenuous of government or anybody to say that, eh, we accept something, have patience with us. The distrust is real. And this is, these are the experiences that they've lived, that mm -hmm. nobody has gone to jail for, they haven't been compensated mm -hmm. for. Right. So government is the one that must come to the table that shows that we're real. All now, right. see how it's also more. We've gone from NSA. Okay, they dissolved it in, in verbally. People are now saying, okay, next step police brutality, proper reform. So right. we'll continue to move. And my hope is that it will move to when we're now talking structural governance issues. All right. Yemi, yeah, I have to let you go, but just tell us the status of what's going on in Alausa right now. I know that you're converging there. Could you give us an idea what's going on right now? People are coming. Music is playing. People are holding uh, posters. And the crowd is building up gradually. What's gradually. the plan? Where are you walking from? From what point to what point? And what, what do you expect well, to see at the end of the day? Now the key thing is we might just walk around um, Oba Femelo and come back or stay here and just really talk. And we have a statement to present to Mr. Governor. Okay. He says he has an appointment with uh, President Buhari at 3 o'clock this afternoon. Okay. So the idea is to present to him these things that I've just talked about. That Yeah, we hear you that you said it, but these are the things that we now show that you plan to implement. Gotcha. All right. Thank you very much. Keep us updated on what's happening. We'll be calling you um, at the course of the show to find out right. how things are going. Thank, Thank you very much. Let's go on a break now. When we come back, we continue with the conversation on hashtag Enter. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back to Your View. Thanks for staying with us. So joining us on the show now is Mr. Benga Omotosho, Honorable Commissioner for Information Lagos State. Good morning, sir. Are you there? Good morning. I'm here. Yes, good to have you on the show. Yes, so yesterday we saw the governor of Lagos State attending to protesters. Could you give us an idea what happened and how he was able to calm them yesterday? Yesterday? Yes. Uh, well, the governor first would like to sympathize uh, with the families who love their lost ones in this uh, crisis. And uh, he just felt uh, taking no action was no option yesterday. And that uh, he had to go and talk to the protesters to understand their feelings and to tell them that uh, he was with them. And that was exactly what he did. He got there. It was a bit rowdy. And at the same time, it was... Uh, not that uh, bad for a situation like that because it was all charged. So he was able to address them and to tell them uh, how he felt that he was in solidarity with them. And then uh, most of them really understood because they were healing him. No. <laughs> That's what the report he got was that they were throwing um, stuff at him. But uh, what was more of what is the government doing? to contain this protest mm. and maintain law and order. Obviously, is we don't want it to morph into something bigger than we can mm. contain. So what are you doing to ensure it doesn't? Yeah, like the governor told them yesterday, 
their grievances are very well understood and they are being looked into. The governor himself is going to meet uh, the president today and later he is going to meet the inspector general of police and uh, he's uh, meeting various uh, groups and uh, assuring them that this matter will be put behind us and that everything that the protesters are asking for will be taken care of. Okay, so yesterday we had people say that um, we had the governor sort of um, in, um, telling like the police force that those protesters were to be let go. But it seemed, you know, people are asking, did it need for the governor to be there? Because we also had the, the um, <coughs> honorable um, House of Rep member that um, for Surulere constituency. Desmond Elliott. Yeah, Desmond Elliott had to go himself. So is the word of the governor not enough to let mm. protesters go? That he had to be there or send, you know, his reps there before these protesters were let go. I didn't get that question right. Oh, today. Okay. So protesters were arrested yesterday. And the word on the street is that it got the um, Desmond Elliott, who is a House of Rep member, Suri Leary Leary. Consi constituency, mm -hmm. to get there. Um, lots of lawyers had to go there, even though the state governor has said that those protesters need to be let go and that they understood their grievances. Why did it have to take, you know, extra people to go there? Is the word of the governor not enough? Yeah, you see, I was there when the governor ordered that these people, everybody arrested over the protest must be released expressly, without condition. But you see, the police, they have their own uh, procedure. Because if, uh, according to the police, if, if you arrest somebody and then the person is uh, made to make a, a, a statement and then uh, the, the process has to be uh, concluded, somebody has to come to uh, write that, uh, well, I'm uh, taking the person away from here. Because according to the police, if we just release them by word of mouth and they leave the police and something happens after that, Nobody will be accountable. But you have to find somebody who will say, yes, I was there when the police released them, and then uh, I took them away from the place. Oh, I think that was the that process way. that was delaying the whole thing. Okay. But I was there when the governor ordered that everybody arrested okay. must be expressly released. Yes. OK. So um, the protesters, especially Yemi Ademoleko, we, we, we interviewed earlier, mentioned the fact that in the course of um, the protests, and the statement by the president in that it was just a statement. We've heard this before. There should have been a roadmap. People also online have said that the system of the rapid response team, that the RRR, RRS yeah. is the perfect template that can be adopted for any strike force to engage from a distance and only respond when needed. Um, how is the governor engaging with the IG of police to replicate the template of RRS, which has been effective in Lagos in curbing crime and yet not deteriorating into being an extortion and um, uh, police brutality? Yes. So it, how can we, how I, what, 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 what is the governor doing to pass on that model to the IGP? Well, you, you have to know the police are not uh, a state government uh, uh, creation. Mm -hmm. they, 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 they report to the federal government. Mm -hmm. But like you said, our race, we have a sort of control mm -hmm. over them. So we can tell them what to do and how to behave. Lagos has a culture of uh, protest and uh, peaceful protest, not just protest, peaceful mm -hmm. protest. And people are allowed to hear their views, mm -hmm. their human rights are respected. Mm -hmm. And that culture is what uh, the governor, Mr. Bajetson, who is maintaining. Uh, so, I mean, and he is going to, he, he's been drumming that into the ears of uh, uh, the police authorities that nobody must be killed in Lagos, nobody must be shot. And all of the things that they are talking about against the uh, police, the staff, that all of them must stop. Okay, based, based on what you just said, that Lagos has a history of, you know, peaceful protest. Um, is there a possibility of, you know, empowering the police in Lagos State to keep the peace? Because we had instances where they had to, you know, respond to maybe the protesters rushing at them or anything, and then what they use will be bullets. They don't have, they don't have, you know, water guns. They don't have, you know, the other peaceful ways to maintain the peace. Exactly. So what they have is dangerous to be, to be used. 
Did you hear me, Hello? sir? I didn't, I didn't even get that question. Okay, you said that Lagos is a, you know, has a history of peaceful protest. So I would expect that Lagos have, you know, w uh, you know, empowered their police within the state to have water uh, guns, teasers, and all of that in case they are being attacked, rather than shooting at, um, uh, you know, protesters, and you know, which is more dangerous. That the protesters are being attacked. Yes. Yeah, it's unfortunate that uh, that happened. And uh, I think we tried to find out what exactly happened because it was a commotion. And uh, when you have uh, that kind of commotion, is you get various uh, versions of uh, what may have uh, gone wrong. And okay. somebody, the, the, the police version was that the people stormed uh, some Muslim, stormed uh, the the the, the anti-kidnapping unit uh, uh, in Surulere and tried to uh, actually bridge two suspected kidnappers. And while they were doing this, uh, they shot at the policeman who unfortunately died, and that uh, while they were trying to escape, they were Sir. firing into the air, and pillars hit uh, a, a bystander. So if the police so had... Police if the police had other so other tools, weapons, oh that. sorry, no weapons, no. Methods. Other methods of keeping the peace, you know, without necessarily sh having to shoot at, you know, a, a, a protesters to keep the peace, we won't, we, won't ha we won't have, you know, deaths like that. And the account of, well, um, you know, some of the protesters is that the, the police officer shot was shot by mistake from another, another police officer. Have you investigated that account? Okay. You know what? I would I I like us direct that question to the spokesperson of police. We'll talk to you in a moment. But mm -hmm. I'll let uh, the commissioner for information let go. At this I, I, point. I've not I've not investigated that I can, but right. I thought uh, hearing something from the commissioner of police was uh, authentic. Mm. And uh, if uh, I mean when that kind of thing happens, like I said, you uh, in a commotion, there will be so many versions. Right. Right. So you have to really, really go deep, deep, deep to be able to know exactly what happened. There are so many videos supporting the fact that uh, the shot may have been fired unknowingly by a policeman. Uh, others supporting the fact that indeed it was fired by Woodlock. All right. We have to let you go, but Honorable Commissioner, we need to be... Keep tabs on you, especially because the governor will be meeting with the president today. We'd like to get up-to-date information on what they're saying, what they're discussing, and what the plans are, especially for Lagos State. So we'll hope to hear from you soon later in the day. Thank you very much. All right. Let's go on a break. When we come back, we'll speak to the spokesperson for the commissioner for uh, police in Lagos State to know exactly what the modus operandi is in times like this. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back to Your View. Thanks for staying with us. So we are still on the hashtag NSARS conversation. With us this morning is Korede Bello. He's a police youth ambassador. Hi. He spoke with the IGP yesterday, and he's going to be speaking with the IGP again today. Hello, Korede in the building. Yo, whoop, yo, whoop, yo. Whoop. Hi. Hi. I'm Good almost, morning. Good morning. I'm almost certain that when you became a youth ambassador, you never knew that this time would come where you'll be sought after to talk about the police. Oh. No, <laughs> it's um, it's 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 a it's a fragile situation to be in because um, I'm a young person as well, right. and I have experienced uh, my own fair share of um, hmm. the situation at hmm. hand. It's, so it's 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 not interesting. Right. Uh, it's serious business. So yeah. yeah on both sides of the divide. Okay, so let me, let's start with your conversation with the ITP yesterday. Both sides, but, um, yes. in, in your view, um, do you, they, they've said they've dissolved SARS, but young people still don't believe. In your view, what do you think is the best approach for the police to handle or address this issue at, at hand? So, um, fundament they didn't say it has been dissolved. Um, fundamentally, there's a, there's a trust, there's an atmosphere or aura of distrust between the police and, and the people. It has always been there. So especially having, you know, the repeated disbandment of the units over the past four years, it definitely, you know, arises uh, or arouses the feeling of distrust in this new um, statement. But this time it is confirmed. Uh, there's so many things that, that the police or the, the, um, the government can do. But the most important thing is to show, not to say, 
you know, what has or what hasn't been done. People need to see it, need to feel it. So while we were having the forum yesterday, there was a uh, conveyor forum um, with National Human Rights Commission, some CSOs and the presidential panel on the recommendations, both the five demands that we asked and the presidential, uh, the recommendations by the presidential panel on, on the issue. Uh, while we were speaking, you know, I was getting messages from my friends about the situation on ground in Surulere. So there's, you know, there's, there's, there's two alternate realities. So there's the realities of the policy and implementation happening here, but there's the realities of the expressions that are happening on ground so it's not about what's happening here or what they said or didn't say. It's what are the people feeling. Mm. So until people start seeing the change, right. they're not going to believe it. So it's right. not about who says what. Right. It's about seeing the change. Right. But unfortunately, it's going to take time because mm. the system, systematic failure, and right. um, we would naturally have to correct that over time. So time, it seems, is what the prot uh, protesters are saying they don't have. And... Um, for me, I feel that maybe one or two concrete things need to be put in place for us to get that um, calmness that we're looking for. Is there any one or two things that the police is willing to do right away to calm the protesters? Oh, you know, right, right then I, I challenged the IG to tell the men to stop using live ammunition on peaceful protesters. Mm -hmm. It is not done. People are allowed to, to assemble, you know, right to assembly. It's constitutional. So, I, you know, a rubber bullet, whatever it is, but people should not be shot at. Unfortunately, unfortunately, the situation on ground is that a lot of people, some other type of uh, uh, divisions have taken over the protest and, you know, naturally it will be violent and they're going to police stations. So people, you just like natural, anybody with arms will try to protect themselves. But order has been given that they should not shoot at protesters. That is the first step to, you know, assuring and allaying the situations that, okay, they are committed to, you know, to everything, you know, to, right. to calming the people down. Right. It's just natural that p you, young people will be aggravated the more. But the more these things keep, ha keep happening, you know, the shootings and, and stuff, it's just right. going to get bad. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, Jesse, your meeting with the IG, and um, it's important now to, to clarify whether since the disbandment of um, SARS, whether they've, you know, disarmed those officers because there are allegations that immediately after that was announced, other areas, other people came out with videos of them being attacked the very next minute, the very next day and up till now. So what is the IG stand clearly on, you know, those officers who are disobeying that order that he's mm. given to his, and, you know, are we likely to see not only them being, uh, you know, dismissed, but, you know, prosecuted for those uh, actions that they took? Oh, absolutely. One of the five, one of the demands that we're making is an op for for the airing officers to be um, to be tried openly, to face justice in an op you know in a public forum or a forum that is open to the public for everybody to know. So apparently, a lot of um, officers get dismissed and punished. They have an internal system that deals with this kind of stuff, but the people don't know, and that's what has been causing the tension. Like the people need to see yeah. that oh, this person acted up. I don't want to curse on TV, but this person, you know, did this, Messed and up. this is what we're going to do to the person. But people need to start, you know, we need to have a public forum where Same people thing. face justice, you know, because they, they offended the public, and the public needs to, you know, feel that justice um, happen. I'm right. aware that, you know, the, the orders have been given to stand down, so I, I accept that, you know, I see a video of uh, the SARS people holding nominations, and, and I can show it to him. Personally, because he was even surprised um, yesterday when I showed him the video in, from Surulere, um, because he already got the report as well while we're, um, right. while we're having the meeting. Right. But the report he got from his um, people was that the the police it was police officers that were shot. There were three right. police officers that got shot. The video that was in circulation of the man with the tom belly was actually a police officer mm. um, that was shot. So right. one dead, I think two were in the hospital. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so um, I, the, the thing is, you're, you're in a privileged position where you can speak truth to power. And the Nigerian youth is counted on mm. you to actually speak the truth to power because there's a huge chasm between mm. us, the Nigerians on the streets, and every other person that's experiencing this brutality mm. and our leaders. Many times they don't even believe what we're saying is true. Absolutely. So how Absolutely. are you engaging that's them true. to show them evidence that what, they are, what the protest is genuine, 
and it is as a result and a reaction to what is happening. Right. And two, what would you say to your young people on the street, having experienced the challenges the police officers are facing? So two comments from you, please. Okay, let me start from number two. First off, um, I don't want young people to feel like, oh, I'm going to speak on behalf of them. No, I'm not the official spokesperson of young people. This is an organic protest, an organic yearning from young people across Nigeria. I'm in no position to speak for them. I am speaking for myself because I have experienced my fair share of police brutality. I have stopped my car so many times in the night, in the day, to uh, intervene on so many, you know, strangers, people that I don't know. And I don't need to be, you know, talking about it. I decided to take this challenge on five years ago to be part of change, to be part of people that, you know, speak truth to power and not just pay lip service to community development or national nation building. So I am on, on, on this journey, on this quest for myself and my, my generation or my, my, uh, my, my children unborn, because I want to see in Nigeria the change. That's the only reason why I'm engaging this uh, conversations on a top level, because I believe that it's policy this uh, policy um, discussions that we need to have. We cannot have real change if we cannot change policy. Right. Uh, the police have been affected by years and years of systemic failure, and IDs will come and go. Policemen will keep you know, right. going the rank, but the system is not corrected. We cannot do that. Mm -hmm. So the first question, um, you said, what am I doing with the IG? What am I saying to the IG, or how am mm -hmm. I telling him? Oh, yeah, I feel yeah. uh, definitely there is a disconnect it's just like, you know, time is relative, right? Mm. There's a disconnect with what's happening on ground mm. and what, you know, the people on the, the heads of the government are feeling or mm. the pulse. They don't really this understand the pulse on the streets. Mm -hmm. So, and it, it is our, you know, it is our, is our job as, a, um, let me say, middlemen of some sort, CSOs, or people who can have access to top, you know, to the top people to let them right. know what is going on ground. You know, many, many you know, news agencies didn't really cover it until international media, media agencies started, you know, putting eye on the matter. That's how it is. Many, many leaders didn't even know what's going on. Ah, what's going on? Next thing they see themselves, ah, in the same Nigeria that we're in, like CNN is, ah, I didn't know about this. Hmm. So there is disconnect, and we need more people. In fact, I think everybody should be a security right. ambassador, a police ambassador, a counselor, whatever it is, whatever role that you... You, you feel you can responsibly right. manage. Mm -hmm. You should okay. take it on. We let should me, stop paying lip service to Let me go on a quick break. When we come back, we'll continue this conversation with Corey. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back to Your View. Thanks for staying with us. Corey, are you still there? Currently, yes, yeah. you're still there. Now, um, the yeah. greatest strength of these protests, as everyone has been saying, is the fact that it's organic. But I think it's also the weakness we have mm. because there's no one person to go to to Absolutely. negotiate or dialogue with. Absolutely. There are various pockets Absolutely. of protests all over, and that makes it even more dangerous because we don't even know how to resolve this. So we've seen um, a potpourri of artists, you, Files, Wizkid, uh, what's the other guy's name? David Doe, Rontown. 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 All of you are coming together. And, it, and it's great to see you at the front lines. Is it possible you can have a conversation together to have some kind of a leadership? Because at some point, at some point, we need dialogue. Because we, it's great to go on the streets. But at some point, we need to have a conversation. So can, you, can we formalize these protests? Can we at some point have, have a leader? So we know who to go to and begin to dialogue properly. Yep. Or do you think we just keep being on the streets until things are changed? Oh, no, absolutely. It's, it is not wise um, for any movement to not have some type of leadership. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, the, the, the strength of this protest so far was that it was organic and people felt a need to take this fight as their own. People were united by a common goal. But unfortunately, as it grows, as it, get, as it gets bigger, you know, it, it becomes a weakness. Like you said, it becomes a disadvantage because no, you know, no leadership structure. You know, people can do whatever they like. It can be taken over by people who don't share the same intentions as the people who started it. You know, um, but I know that um, my, my colleagues are doing everything in their power, files, back to W. I know they suggested um, 
some um, dress code, to be able to identify themselves, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, to know who is with us and who is not with us, those kinds of narratives. But um, unfortunately, at some point, we will need some type of leadership um, to call people to order. Because if it gets taken over by miscreants or you know people who have arms, the police or the other agencies would you know, have no other options to protect the lives and properties of we'll other people the because reality. other people's safety would be in question. Well, you know, because uh, if they start robbing or taking shops and all of that. So, Corey, they, have you heard of the other side of the of this uh, argument where some people are claiming they don't want the SARS disbanded, they don't want, you know, those people sacked or anything that uh, those who are benefited I from think SARS. Have you I heard think, that argument and I what do you think about it? I think that's, um, it's not a discussion we should be having right now. It's ridiculous. Um, it, it all sounds political um, because the, whatever it is that we create now should be intelligence based, right? If, there, if there's any need for any movement, um, of a special anti-kidnapping squad or whatever it is. It should be intelligence-based. You know, we shouldn't have people randomly just, you know, without uniforms, just stopping people on the car, like, with arms. Some people got into my car one day, like, you know, they just opened the door. I saw one big gun in the front seat. Probably it looked like it was me. Like, and that's because it's me. Hmm. Like, so many oh, other people, that, that is just nonsense. It's ridiculous. That needs to stop. That, that, right, that's impunity. Right. It needs to stop. It needs to end. There's no pro SARS, nothing. That's right. just Let me nonsense. take this call from Usman. Good morning. Are you there? Thanks for calling. Yeah, good morning. Morning. Yeah. I'm calling from Abuja. You're live. Go ahead, please. Yes. Uh, specifically, I want to raise this few observations that sometimes in this country, we have to be very careful and we have to be sensitive. Sometimes some good people will start some good things, but evil ones, especially terrible politicians, will take advantage of everything. Mm -hmm. I personally know that there are a lot of sensitive things in this country that people are supposed to protect against it, but that is not done, especially the issue of local government autonomy, that governors are taking over. But people refuse to protest all against our governors that are creating most of the problem. The autonomy of the legislators, people are not protesting. And insecurity is getting high in this country. Yes. And the governor, the president said, okay, I have this bandit. Why shouldn't they put a stop to it and observe them for a week or two to know the reform and what they want to put into? But if they refuse to do that and continue to protest and protest and protest, how are we going to know the truth? And how are we going to confirm that there is nothing behind their protest? Right. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Yeah, Osman, for your great. views of this morning. Okay, so um, I know that in the beginning of this protest, we had um, Fowles and Ron Town. We had Fowles tweet about it that he will be going out. And I think that... Um, to, to a large extent, it was sort of like the beacon for people to feel like if Faust is willing to, to go on the street, then we can join this. However, there was major was hardship. There was run, right, run town first. There was made, there, there, there was, it was, it caused major inconvenience for people yesterday. Major one. People were stuck in traffic for hours. So I understand the plight of, you know, I, I, I like, I feel you guys. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm we're in this together. We want to all. <laughs> get this thing sorted out. I don't okay. want someone putting a gun in my yes. face. I don't, because even if, if I have a health issue, my yeah. heart might just fl flip. So, but why do we get into the situation where our protest now causes, like we, they, they, they blocked Lekki, and then there was gridlock for hours, and people were stuck. How do we avoid that happening? Because that can pull back, yeah. that can pull water down what we're fighting for. If we become a bit unruly, Absolutely. and it was still peaceful, but they okay. just were not able to let traffic flow. I think, I, is this a question for me? Yes. <laughs> Comments or question? Go ahead. 
<laughs> okay. Uh, okay. All right. So I think we need to be more strategic about our projects. Now, the, our voice or our voices have been heard. Mm. The national media, the government, our recommendations, they are listening. Trust me. Mm. They are listening. The government is aware. But mm. we should not use the opportunity to go, like you said, water down the quality of mm. our voice by mm. inconveniencing um, other people. Yeah. So I suggest, you know, I, I haven't tweeted about it, I suggest that, you know, we could say, okay, you know what, from 12 o'clock to 2 o'clock, we're going to occupy. And we're mm. going to be at like to get and once it's two o'clock we know we're moving mm. but we're going to go this that, that so it's not like you know it's um disorganized or you know like you know when that when that during that two hour um um protest right. people you know you know that you have you, you, they felt your your word and when you two we move mm. so it's not like people are protesting all day and all of that mm. it's, it's just strategic forms of right. protest you know, it's not not everybody has to be on the streets. Not mm -hmm. everybody has to be in the office right. of the IG. But everybody can contribute something as a right. form and act. Unfortunately, Corrida, we have to let you go at this point. But thank, thank you, you so much. much. Thank I you. think I mean yeah. I think I got better than I thought. We thought got better than we can thought. Thank, thank you so much, Corrida. Yes, go ahead, please. Sorry, let me, go ahead. Please let me just say this last thing. So, I advocate for mental health. I personally believe that the stem of our problem is from mental health or mental mm. illness. I believe that a lot of our leaders suffer from a form of mental illness. I believe that if we can address mental yeah. illness on a large mm -hmm. scale and stop the stigma, mm -hmm. we will see problems for what they really are. A lot of our actions and inactions are a result of the expressions of our internal environment. Ah. If we cannot get our internal environment right, we will keep making mistakes and keep curing symptoms. So these are just symptoms we're speaking about. Mm. But we start addressing our internal environment, we will not get the leadership that we seek, we will not end the culture of opportunity, and we'll just be going round and round. So everybody, oh, wow. we need to amplify the message more to check in with what's going on in our head. A lot All of people right. are crazy, a lot of leaders are, they're not good upstairs, and we let them. We don't no, have any psychological, you know. To the police. So, I think we can let you go with that, because yeah. you told us you are sitting in the, in the environment you. of power, I and you are am. confirming to us. So many of our leaders, right it's not now. correct up there. So thank you very much for ah, giving us that right insight. Yeah. That's not, don't take no, it no, 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 no. Okay, let me, let, me, let me rephrase that because mm -hmm. we can be misconstrued. Because we're also talking yeah. about mm -hmm. But it's important to know, I think you're right. Mm -hmm. See, I'm, I, I was trying to just joke about it, but yeah. the truth is, Corey is letting us know mm -hmm. that there's a lot of mental instability going on with many leaders out there. Because we had said it earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, He's talking about Nigerians generally, mm -hmm. saying that if we take mental health serious, even the recruits that we bring in, the people who bring them in, everybody needs to take this particular... The point I was trying to drive at was, saying was that, because we said it earlier, that there are things happening on the streets that people up there seem to be totally oblivious. oblivious. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's like you're in your bubble, mm -hmm. yeah. but you don't know what's going issue. on. Yeah. So it's part of that mental health issue mm -hmm. that he's talking about, which I think it, that it makes a whole lot. So thank you very much, Corey, for joining us. We me. appreciate you. Um, he's thank a police you. youth ambassador, and he was apt for this conversation. Let's take a few apt. tweets and calls before we run off. Uh, I think we have a caller. Good morning. Are you there? Lucky. Hello, good morning, Mariah. Go ahead, please. Yeah, my name is Lucky. I'm calling from Bariga. Yes, go ahead. You're live. I want us to look at it from this angle also. Okay. You see, we are talking about SARS today. Countless of times I'll see, you see this, there are these OP Nessar vehicles. They go from one bus stop to the other asking for money. They, in fact, they'll stop at Keke bus stop and Keke park. They'll stop at uh, the, 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 the very notorious Pangu uh, bus stop. They will collect money. Mm. After, and they have different factions of OP, you know, you just see them in military camouflage. Mm. You don't know, they are soldiers, yes. I've seen them several times. Then the SARS guys will come at Pangu. It is a regular thing. In fact, there are infighting between the leadership of the bus stops and, you know, and then the OP Mesa and the SARS guys that come in. They have their factions that they support. And sometimes when there is a fight that breaks out, you see that all of them will turn the black eye to the black eye to the seat, and then the public. Those living in that environment, mm -hmm. everybody was camping for safety. Mm -hmm. You see, this is beyond, this is not a matter of uh, all this English you are speaking here. Right. You, you need to, that IGP is incompetent. Mm. Thank you very much, Lucky. Unfortunately, yeah. we have to wrap up on that. Yeah. We don't have any more time, but um, we'll post more of the tweets out there. Mm -hmm. uh, but finally, I have to tell, tomorrow on our show, we'll be, fun, we'll be 
focusing on the fundamental root cause. Thank you. That's what I want. The root cause <laughs> of this problem yep. that we're all talking about, yes. of the security yes. agency. There's so many things that started this. Yes. We're going to focus on it with Dr. Charles Amboni tomorrow on the show. Have a fabulous day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.